Yesterday, DJI announced a new smart controller for the Mavic 2 range, and the community have responded with extreme excitement or extreme disappointment. Let's start by looking at what's wrong with the new smart controller. Hi, I'm Ashton Droning on, and first of all, smash that subscribe button if you can. The more subscribers I have, the more stuff I can review. So keep supporting the channel by clicking that button. Also, I've just enhanced my studio a little bit by adding a lovely LED light, which you could actually attach to a drone. It's called the iWatta Genius, and it is brilliant. Links to it are in the video description if you want to take a quick look. Anyway, let's get straight to it. Our last video announcing the smart controller got a load of comments. Many of you gave your views on the positives, but also the negatives. And in this video, we're gonna run through and summarize what is wrong with this new smart controller and what possibly can be looked at for improvement. So the first and the biggest, most glaring negative is the price. Now I'm gonna look at the figures here in English, but it's all relative in terms of your other currencies, but it retails at 579 pounds, which yes, is a lot of money. However, if we look at the combo packages, the regular combo with the regular transmitter is 1,349. With the smart controller, it's 1,779, which is a difference of 430 pounds. Taking into account the price of the smart controller on its own, they're valuing the regular transmitter at only £150, which doesn't seem quite right, seeing as that normally retails for way over £300 on its own as a replacement. Price point is a big issue, and that has been the most common comment on our videos, and DJI really do need to rethink this. However, do consider that this is not just a screen. It's a transmitter that incorporates the OcuSync 2 technology, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and a whole array of features, including that lovely Crystal Sky screen. So actually, it's a lot of money, but when you think about it, you're getting quite a lot for it. Another comment is that the screen is below the sticks, and some people have an issue with that, actually me included. When I'm flying, I do like to mount my tablet or my phone above the sticks of the transmitter, not below them. So for some people, that is a problem. The smart controller has no data or LTE. Therefore, for doing any kind of streaming, you're going to need to pair it with a phone that has a cellular connection. Now, it might be a little bit too much to expect this to have a cellular connection, but it certainly would be a nice addition to the next model. Now, one comment that came up mentioned the missing telemetry. Oddly, a lot of people like the telemetry that the regular transmitter has. Now, for me personally, I really don't care about that display. I've never really even looked at it, but some of you out there do like it, and it would be nice if perhaps the smart controller had a very small display to show similar information. But remember, that would decrease your battery time and also possibly increase the size of the device. And is it really necessary? Others have commented on the brightness. Now, a thousand CDM2 is bright, but people want more. Crystal Sky gives 2,000. The Galaxy Note 8 apparently can be scaled up using the super brightness option to about 1,200. Perhaps the next model could see a boost in that brightness up to match the Crystal Sky's impressive 2,000 nits. Now, the screen in the smart controller uses an Android platform, which some people are slightly unhappy about. Now, I've always used Android to fly my DJI devices, but there aren't many out there that love and swear by the iOS platform, especially because DJI have paired with Apple and actually recommend it as their preferred platform. With Apple devices, there is only one set of hardware because Apple produce it all. Whereas of course, Android can be set onto multiple different vendors and manufacturer platforms. Therefore, that means that software isn't always particularly stable. However, I don't think this will be as much of an issue with the smart controller because we are only using one device. Therefore, DJI will have spec'd that hardware properly and carefully and hopefully tested it. Others have commented on the size of the screen, stating that 5.5 inches is too small for them. Now, remember, a bigger screen means a bigger device, and the whole point of this all-in-one compact controller is that it's compact. So I don't think actually that 5.5 is too small. I think it's a good compromise, taking into account as well battery life. Now, another common comment on our video is the incompatibility with earlier Mavic models, and that includes the original Mavic Pro and the Mavic Air. Also, the Spark has been mentioned. Having a single smart controller for your entire DJI fleet would have been great. And when we consider that this device includes Wi-Fi, I'm puzzled as to why DJI didn't make it compatible with the Spark and the Mavic Air, which both use the Wi-Fi protocol. 
Incompatibility with the original Mavic Pro may be simply because OcuSync 2 has slightly different hardware to OcuSync 1 and making it backwards compatible might have made the device bigger and utilize more battery power. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like there will be any backwards compatibility to those other drones moving forward. Another concern is what about the future? What about when another drone is launched by DJI that uses OcuSync 3 perhaps? Will this device support that or not? Now this all comes down to whether OcuSync Evolution is purely hardware or purely software or a mixture of the two, but we will see. What you don't want to do is invest in an expensive device totaling £600 only to find that the Mavic 3 won't be compatible with it. Hopefully DJI have considered this and maybe when OcuSync 3 arrives, drones equipped with it will be backwards compatible to OcuSync 2. Now an observation from me when I received the high resolution photography is that there don't appear to be any covers for those ports on top of the controller. We've got a HDMI port, a USB port and also an SD card slot and I really would like to see those covered over when they're not in use. Primarily because if you are flying in conditions where there might be a little bit of speckled rain, you don't want water getting into those upward facing ports. No doubt third party accessories will introduce covers for those. Now, as per the comments we had for the Osmo Pocket, the other complaint is the non-user replaceable battery. The controller uses lithium-ion 18650s, which are the same kind of batteries that you find in your vaping devices. So I really don't understand why DJI couldn't have simply designed a little accessible port underneath the controller so that batteries can be swapped. Not only would this mean that when the batteries reach their end of life recharge cycles that you can put in brand new ones, but also it means that when you're out in the field, you could carry spare fully charged batteries with you for a quick swap so that you can keep flying. Another personal observation is that you're paying a lot of money for this controller, but it doesn't come with a hard case. I was really surprised at that when I watched some of the great unboxing videos from other reviewers to find that it's just packaged inside the cardboard box and that it doesn't come with any protective hard case so that when you're traveling, that lovely screen is protected. And finally, I think it would have been really nice if there was just even a detachable cover that just slotted over that screen. When you're traveling and slipping the controller into your bag, you really don't want to scratch that screen because it's not gonna be easy to replace it. So just a little cover that you attach to that screen, maybe magnetic, would have been very, very nice just to keep it nice and scratch free. So they're my thoughts on what might be wrong with the smart controller. I've got one on its way for review and no doubt I have some more feedback at that time. But this is all based on comments on my videos and also my own inspection of those high resolution imagery. No doubt you have your own opinion, so comment below with your thoughts. Give this video a thumbs up and also be sure to visit the Droning On discussion group. We're just over 3,000 members now and we're all actively discussing this brand new launch right now. A link to that brilliant Facebook group is in the video description. In the meantime, thanks very much for watching.